Card game anime. A subgenre in the anime community that most people tend to avoid right off immediately and just think of as a simple toy commercial. But I am not one of those people! Except when I'm feeling cynical, but I'm not gonna feel cynical right now. Because I choose to believe that in their attempts to make you believe they're more than the sum of their parts, card game anime can do a great job at giving us some very interesting stories and some fun ways to show their uh, action and plot. Now, yes, sometimes you'll get a shadow verse, but sometimes you'll get a card fight vanguard, but sometimes you get a card fight vanguard, but sometimes you get a card fight vanguard. But sometimes you get a card fight vanguard. But sometimes card fight vanguard is good. Yeah. So let's assume that this will be like the 50% of card fight vanguard is good as we talk about build divide. And it's got a whole bunch of other things after the title I refuse to say. But Build Divide is a new card game anime based on a new card game coming out that has probably been delayed five or six times at this point. But hey, that's the world we're living in. This new uh, game features a lot of similar mechanics to Vanguard. Uh, many people see some other similarities to the game, other games. I think they're designed by the same... Uh, person initially but yeah no this is a new game that seems to put a lot of emphasis on waifus uh, but it of course naturally now has a anime to go along with it uh, will I talk about every episode of this anime time will tell but for right now let us talk about episode one because you know what when I first heard this was coming out I literally just thought it was gonna be a shadow verse again like just another card game anime just using the table scraps of its predecessors but you know what it actually doesn't. Now, this anime does some very strange, interesting things in this first episode. Will it be good? Will it be bad? Fuck if I know. But let's cover it. Uh, let's just start right at the beginning. And let's start with what I think is the one thing that, no matter where the show goes, is its first major positive, And that's the visual style. I really like looking at this show. The first episode is mostly set uh, over the course of one night, so therefore it's mostly dark, but it never feels dull. The color palette in this show is so beautifully saturated and really like just fills a scene. A scene because it's night will obviously have a lot of black and dark dull colors to it, but no, they just Fill it with color! Sometimes the same color. There's like a scene where everything's just illuminated by a green light. There's another one with a pink light. You never feel like you're just looking at two colors. There's some great art direction in here. And I hope it remains consistent and follows its way through the whole show. But yeah, no, so that was the first thing I really liked. The next thing that happens is we are introduced to our main character, who once again is a dude, because as we all know, the target demographic is uh, 12 to 15 year old boys. But yeah, no, we meet our main character, haven't remembered any names yet, and now would be a good time to touch on the character designs as well, so we can get the other uh, sort of uh, looks uh, idea out of the way. And this protagonist's design, I weirdly dig it. Now, some people are criticizing it, saying he kind of looks like every generic anime boy out there right now. But here's kind of where I'm at mentally right now with this. And that is that in a world where almost every card game anime protagonist has to look like just every other big, goofy, shonen character... Something about a more grounded, sort of standard anime design you'd see wherever you go, actually for a card game anime feels weirdly refreshing, so I'm strangely kind of okay with it. Uh, and of course you do get some design aspects on other characters that look a bit interesting. Uh, the girl's kind of big thing is her scarf, which actually looks kind of cool, and she looks cute enough. Uh, the bad guy's design seems kind of interesting. They're about it, you meet. There's like a random uh, bum who is like trying to stalk the girl or she attacked him or it's not entirely made clear what happened in that scene. Uh, he's got kind of a standoff, standout-ish, but kind of standard looking design. Uh, the character designs, we're, we're kind of going to need to see where this goes. It depends on how it like kind of uses them and interweaves the idea of them into the show. So yeah, we will see that as we go. Uh, but yeah, from there, uh, he just kind of shows up in the city. I am a little confused as to what the deal with him is. He's like, I've got no memories, but I've got a goal. 
Or maybe that's what I saw in the trailer. I'm not gonna lie. It was like 11.15 at night when I watched this. Uh, but yeah, no. So, our main guy runs into the main girl, and he's kind of aloof, a little strange, a little odd. And what I like is she acknowledges this. Like, she, when she first meets him, kind of seems to acknowledge there's something strange going on with this guy. And so you kind of get the impression throughout the rest of the episode she's trying to gauge what his deal is and how maybe she can either take that to her own advantage or just see maybe if uh, helping him will help her out in the end. A lot of kind of interesting little interplay between the characters. I kind of enjoy it. But yeah, they also make it in this anime that instead of everyone sitting around to do a card game, while you can do that, apparently you can also just like have cards just like blow shit up and attack people. Finally! No need to play a card game. Just go like inner city violence on the shit. So yeah, that was kind of neat. Uh, we do get a glimpse of the main villain and he's got a plan, but yeah, no. So then the rest of the episode turns into just kind of introducing you to the card game and getting a grasp of the rules. And I'll say this much, I got a much better grasp of this card game based on this first episode than I did in something like a year's worth of Shadowverse episodes where I didn't really get any clue how anything worked. But no, something I do like about this show uh, based on the pilot is that it seems to be skewed a little more towards teens as opposed to trying to get younger kids in there. So it does sort of feel like there is enough of a respect for the audience's intelligence that it knows it can take the chance and sort of like step by step explain things to you. And you'll either be interested enough in the product placement or interested in enough in the characters uh, that you will continue on to it. Oh, also, I do appreciate the fact it doesn't take itself that seriously. Uh, we see at the beginning, he, they've done, I've seen this cliche in other anime, the girl's running from the bum, she either challenged to a fight, or he's doing something with her, I don't know, uh, I guess, I guess she challenged him or something, whatever, uh, and they bump into each other, and he drops his bread, and he's annoyed that his bread got dropped, and we see that the, like, bread is in the shape of a cute bear, and then the guy steps on the bear and smashes it, and the cream and the bread, like, looks like tears, and then she's even kind of looking at him like, what the fuck? <laughs> I kind of enjoyed that. That was fun. Uh, so then we get into the card game. I think I covered everything. Uh, I watched this Saturday night uh, after I watched Ghost Game Episode 2 and then went to bed. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. So then they do the standard card fight. We learn all the rules. The game seems interesting. I might give it a try if it ever makes its way over here to the West. Uh, but yeah, no. So uh, they do the card fight. And then, like, at first it's explaining the rules. But then around the time the rules get grasped, we make our turn into full edgy boyness. <laughs> so, he re also we saw a glimpse of his main monster, this like Grim Reaper looking motherfucker uh, earlier in the game. Uh, but yeah, no, they do the card fight and then he activates his like edge boy powers. <laughs> I guess he gains some level of his memories back. He puts up his hood. <laughs> just, just look at this. <laughs> like what the fuck is this? I don't know if this show is really taking itself that seriously. My gut is leaning towards no. But, like, this looks so silly. How can you not love it and be entertained? And, yeah, and then the episode ends with, of course, what's gonna happen next week? Check it out! And then what's important is there's only, like, 12 episodes to this, which means there's a good chance it will maintain its good visual quality, and if there's ideas, they won't be overly dragged out. I hope this is going to be the future of card game anime, as even though I like Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s quite a bit, uh, we've seen what happens when storylines and plot ideas get dragged out too much. But yeah, no, that was Build Divide Episode 1. What do I actually, in all due sincerity, think this is and where it will go? I think this is going to be a very fun show. Uh, it's got that emo edge boy look to it, but I don't think it's actually taking itself that seriously, and it's kind of trying to have a little fun with its own goofy cliche tropes. But yeah, that's at least my opinion. Uh, well, tell me what you thought. Maybe you 100% think this is being played straight and you're going to take it seriously and it's going to be your new best thing and when people insult it, you'll be like that very small minority of people who are saying Shadowverse was excellent. 
But yeah, in the comment section below, give me your thoughts on that. Uh, and as always, click to like, click to subscribe, and tune in next week as we continue down the very odd path that is build, divide, something, something, something.